The next three are all to do with um, providing support for testing the programs. Um, the first one is TCL. So this one got changed into a subdirectory called Unix before we run the configure command. Make as I said before, I'm not going to run the test in this section. It's um, probably there's a chance we'll get errors, and if we start chasing them down, it'll probably be just pointless. Um, so I'll just skip all the test and just go for the, the build and the install. So let's install that. And I've just got a few changes to make to finish up. And that's complete. <coughs> Next package packages expect. So one change to make. Before we run the config command. build it with the make command and finally install that's it, it's quite quick so Deja new so this is quite a quick package to configure and install it won't take long at all, there's no make, you just make install it and it's done because we're not running the tests so that's one of the quicker ones so now we move on to M4 so again a couple of tweaks a lot of these little tweaks are because we're using the newer versions of glibc. Now these three commands, ignoring the make check, are pretty standard. So what you can do is you can bulk these up and connect them with this double ampersand sign. And what that tells the um, bash shell is run the first command to the left of the um, double ampersand and if that passes run the second command after the double ampersand and like like in the same way if this command here runs on the left of this double ampersand then you can run the one on the right of the double ampersand if at any time any one of these programs fails then everything after the double ampersand will not run so it's quite good in causing the sequence of commands to to fail immediately without attempting to run any other commands it means that we don't need to look at the output of the intermediate commands at the beginning on the intermediate as long as the make install has run successfully we can rest assured that the previous commands have run successfully because they would have returned a status indicating such 
to the shell and that's why it's allowed the subsequent commands to, to execute and that command will be using that quite a few times um, in this section so I'll probably just end up recalling that rather than copying and pasting the individual commands again just for speed so that's done Move on to end curses. So this just makes sure that we're using Gork instead of Mork in the configure, and we can run the configure command in. And then make and make install. That's done. Just one little sim link to create. And we can tidy that up now. And move on to bash. Um, if you do the tab completion and it stops without the dot tar, dot gz or bz2 or whatever, if you press tab again, it will show you why that is. There's a conflict that doesn't know whether we want this upstream fixes patch or the actual tar file. So the bit that it's getting stuck at is the character after the zero, after the 5.0. So in that case, it's a minus. And in that case, it's a full stop. So it doesn't know which one we want. So all you need to do is, because we want the tar file, the tar ball, just press the full stop and then tab again and you'll get the rest of the file that you actually want. So let's configure this package. That's, now you see I've missed a full stop, so it's things like that you need to be careful of. Just be wary of how you're copying the stuff. Okay, so we'll make that. That's complete, so we can install it and create a sim link, and that's done. We want to buy some now. So this looks like yeah, it's the standard configure tools, make and make install. So what we can do here is control R, um, type in something like configure, you'll get the previous configure, press control R again, and you'll get the one prior to that, press control R, you'll get another one, control R again, and you'll see we've come back about the fourth configure that's in the history, and this is the one we want. If you just double check it, it's a dot configure, prefix equals tools, a make and a make install. So that's the set of commands we want. Just press enter. Saves a lot of copying, pasting, or typing. Although, of course, if you do do that, just double check with the um, instructions that it is actually the same, the identical command. Okay, that's done. Tidy that one up. And 
we move on to bzip2. Again, this one's got a patch, so we just need to put the dot in to get the tar GZ in. Well, of course, you can type it in by hand if you wish, but not recommended. Best to let the auto completion work. So we do a make command to start off with, and another make to clean, and then we build package. and install it and then these last commands just to move a few files around the create a sim link and it's done and now we want to call utils okay so again this has got a patch file so we need the remainder to get it to extract. So configure the package. build it and let's install it now that's complete Move on to diff utils. So again, this is the standard configure, make, and install. So you can do the control R config. It's not that one. Do control R again. That's the one we need. Just double check it visually, and we can set that in motion. It's done. So now let's move on to file. And again, it's the standard build command. So control R, config, it's found the previous correct one, and we'll just press enter. Nice and easy. So, next one is find utils. And once again, standard commands recall with control R, config, double check the commands. Yep, it looks okay. Press enter. Okay, let's tidy that up. And 
move on to the next one which is Gork and yes again it's a standard build set of build commands It's done. So get text now. So we've got a configure command. And now we can build it to make. Okay, so there's no install instructions for this package, just three binaries are copied into the bin directory. Uh, so that's all we need to do. Oops. So let's move on to grep now. And once again, we've got a standard configure and make and install. So look for configure, it's not that one. Control R, it's that one. It's done. Let's tidy that up and move on to cheese it. And yep, this is standard again.
Tidy up. And we'll move on to make. So we've got configure command. Make to build it. And make install to install the package. That's it. And move on to patch next. And again, this is a standard install. That's done. We can tidy that up and move on to Perl. So configuration is slightly different for Perl. Right, and now we can build it with make. So this is not a full install, we'll just copy some of the files that have been created, some of the binaries. And that's that one done. And move on to Python. Now one slightly different thing about Python as this note says is the package begins with a capital P so if you try to do lowercase you won't see it, it's got to be the capital P to make the package visible. Likewise with the extracted directory. The first command is to make a little modification to one of the files and then we can run the configure and now I can build it
and now that can be installed. And that's complete. So we're getting near the end now and we can do set next. And standard install. So let's look for the configure command. That's the one there. It's done. And let's move on to tar. Again, standard configuration and install. So let's look for that. There's the command there. Or set of commands. Let's just run that now. It's done. So now we move on to text info. And this looks like it's a standard install again. Yeah, it is. And that's complete. So last one, hex said. And once again, standard configure, make and install. So that's all the packages built. We just need to finish up now and come out of this true environment and just do some reconfiguration that's not in the book because we're in this Gen 2 uh, Chirrut. So first of all, we need to do some stripping, which is just to save some space. If um, some disk space, if you're tight on disk space, you'll definitely want to do this. If we look at the size of the tools directory at the moment, there's two and a half gigs worth of um, data that we've, or binaries that we've created with the packages we've compiled so far. And what these strip commands do is just remove symbols and debugging symbols and so on, um, which we, we don't need. And also there's... Um, some commands here to remove documentation as well which we don't really need because it's a temporary um, system that's only going to be used to build the final Linux from scratch system so let's run these commands in and just see what difference that makes that two and a half gig as we run each one in so let's do the first one 
Let's see how much that's reduced. Okay, so it's about 200 megabytes that's gone down. That's uh, not insignificant at all. Let's try this next one. So that's got rid of another 300. So already we've saved 20% of the, the space that has been taken up by tools. We've gone from 2.5 gig to 2 gig straight away. So that's a, a reasonable amount of um, uh, disk space that's been saved. So let's remove the documentation. This probably won't be as much, but it will still be something. Yeah, it's not made any difference. And there's some extra files here. Okay, those last two haven't really made that much space. So it says you should have at least three gigabytes of space in the LFS partition that can be used to build and install GLibc. So let's just take a look. Um, Okay, there you can see we've got two and a half gig used. So it's two gig in tools and the remainder will be all the source files that we downloaded, but we've got 57 gig free. So that's more than enough, much more than enough. So now we're going to change ownership of the tools directory. And at the top here, as it says, the remainder of this book must be performed while logged in as user root, no longer as LFS. And to double check that LFS is set in the roots environment. So this is the bit where we've got to be careful and just move things around a bit to get it out of this root environment. So the first thing we'll do is to do control D to come out of the LFS user. We're still in the root environment, so we'll do control D once more. And we're now back in our original Debian environment without the Gen 2 Troot system. Now, um, so let's look at this directory here. You'll see this is the MNT Gen 2. And within that we had MNT our LFS directory there it is there so this is the bit that should really be at the root MNT not root MNT Gen 2 MNT okay so what we need to do now is um, let's just check what LFS is set to Right, it's not set, so let's set that equals slash MNT slash LFS. And we haven't got a, an MNT LFS yet, so let's make that. There it is there now. And remember, the reason why we did this truth in Gen 2 and downloaded those, that tarball 3 was because of the host system not having certain packages enabled or not configured correctly uh, which allowed us to build the tools. Now we've built the tools successfully and we're going to chroot into those tools. It still doesn't matter that the host system hasn't got those tools because we won't be using them. We'll be using the tools we've just built which are in the tools directory. So basically what we've got to do, we've got to move everything that's in MNT LFS, sorry, the MNT Gen 2 MNT LFS, which is everything there, we've got to move into the um, MNT, for slash MNT LFS, which is currently empty. And if we look at how we've got this mounted, we've actually got our boot mounted on this MNT LFS within Gen 2 and the root. So in theory all we would need to do is unmount these and remount them at the correct location, create a tools link in root like we've got at the moment and that should be all that we need. 
So first of all, let's do, um, let's just look at MNT LFS. Uh, no, sorry, let's look at this one, that's my cell. So this is the old root. So the first thing we need to do is copy this link into the real root we've got at the moment. So let's do CP tools into the root. Can I stack tools? Is that because it's not pointing anywhere at the moment? Okay. Right, let's do this, the unmounting. Now, what we've got to remember is that we've mounted some system, some virtual file systems into the um, Gen 2 directory. So we've got to unmount them as well. Um, but So all we need to do is go back through these mount points go backwards in this direction and we should be able to put ourselves back to how we were um, and it will allow us to unmount these directories and mount them correctly in the new place in the correct place so let's unmount this boot and the root now let's remount them at the correct place so dev sda9 which is the root has got to be mounted at the new lfs which is mnt lfs now and dev sda7 has got to be now mounted at LFS boot. So if we now look at our mount points, you can see we've moved them from MNT Gen 2, MNT LFS into the place they should have been all along, which is MNT LFS and MNT LFS boot. So let's take a look at the LFS directory. That's good. We've got the boot, we've got our sources and we've got our tools. So let's retry that copy command. So CP um, is it this tools in this directory, isn't it? Yeah, CP tools to the root. Um, right, we don't want to actually copy that right normally I thought you could copy a sim link and it will take it but it doesn't seem to be working in this case so what we'll do is we'll recreate it so let's go back to the beginning and just copy and paste the command to create the link and the reason why I'm not doing this by hand is because I want to make sure I do it the way they do it so there's the command there Okay, that's good. So now we've got a link on the route pointing to the partition we've just created. Uh, sorry, not the partition, the mount point we've just created, which is MNT LFS. So that works well. So let's unmount these other. These are the two new mounts we just created, so we'll ignore them. We need to unmount these other file systems which we created for these virtual systems and you'll see that we'll be remounting some virtual file systems when we go into um, the final part of uh, compiling Linux from scratch in the next section okay so let's get rid of that one Right, that says it's busy. Okay, it's not a problem. Maybe if I um, wasn't in it, it might help. 
Oh, it's still there, it doesn't matter. Let's try the next one. That's okay. Try that one. You see all these got MNT Gen 2 in, they're the ones that I'm looking for. going. Uh, let's try MNT Gen 2 Sys. Oh, I wonder am I in? Yeah, this could be what's stopping them. Let's come out of that. That could be stopping some of these because I was in the directory, although it's not in the virtual directory, it's still under the Gen 2. So there's a chance it might be. No, it wasn't. It's busy as well. Let's try the proc that should go. Let's see if I can do more than one of these at once. Let's do that one and that one. Yeah, that's worked. through this let's put this through grep oops let's see the cable's not set up correctly okay let's do that next in case that causes problems to set up the keyboard go to system settings and which one is it input devices Layouts, click this configure layouts. This is a default of US English there. Let's remove that and add. Pick your language, so in my case, English. And then layout, and I want UK layout. And click OK. And apply. So that should now allow me to press the right button uh, grip what was it I wanted Gen 2 as well I want to look for so I've got three left so that, that one there and that one um, yeah, it's just this dev one left. Okay, so there's something still holding that up. I don't know what that is. Let's see if this shows us. OK, 
okay there's quite a lot on there all right it looks like the system's on on that so it doesn't really matter i was hoping to um, unmount the gen 2 um, it won't work because that system's there uh, all right okay Oh no, sorry, we extracted this, didn't we? Yeah, that's okay. Tools. I think that should be it. So what we need to do now is to run, if we look in, we do CD LFS, if we look in tools directory, you'll see they're all owned by users. So this command saying change them all to root to ensure that it's not a security issue. So you see they're all changed to root now, all the directories, the R means recursive, so everything underneath these directories would have been changed to root as well. It's also saying if you intend to keep the temporary tools for use in building future systems, now is the time to back them up. So um, let's do that. Let's back up the tools directory in case you need to use it. I'll show you to do that. I probably won't use them again, but you may want to. So just use a tar command, C for compress, V to visualize what's going on, give it a file name, um, it might be something like uh, tools or something like um, LFS 9.1 uh, tools, something like that, dot tar. Oh, oh, and of course specify what you want to back up. So, uh, archive, sorry, so it's the tools directory. So there are all the files we've just created when we've compiled all these packages. So there you go, so there's our two gigs worth of one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, two gigs worth of um files. Now what I'm gonna do next is to compress them and can use XZ for best compression. And we use Z for compress, V for visual, E for extra compression. 9 for maximum compression and capital T to specify number of threads and I've got 4 cores so I'll put 4 in there and just specify the file name and that will go away and compress the files and it'll give us an estimation of time in a moment so it's going to take about 4 minutes so I'll let that complete and come back when it's done
Okay, so that's done. So it's a good idea to do this because it gives you a little bit of insurance in case something goes wrong in the next chapter. Um, you don't have to wind all the way back to the beginning of the installation. You can just take this, extract it again into the tools directory, set itself up and go back and attempt chapter 6 again if anything goes wrong there. So it is quite a good idea. We can see that's compressed down quite a lot. Um, it's, what's that? Point one eight one is that about a fifth of the original size? Yeah, just under a fifth of the size. So it's quite a good compression. Three hundred and sixty uh, megabytes. So we're ready to move on to the next section now which is where we build the um, Linux from scratch system for proper